Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's the lighter side of genocide, because in a world so full of chaos and madness, if you lose your sense of humour, you'll likely go friggin' nuts. And we are broadcasting live from the fabulously fluoridated capital of Auckland, New Zealand, the island chains nation in the sunny slave South Pacific. Everybody drink their drinks out of half a coconut in New Zealand. That's right. It's a fact. I read it on eBay. My very special, my very special guest today is from Canada, I believe, and her name's Claire Cohen. She's a contributor, or, or at least uh, she appears in the uh, rankings as next to Veterans Today, um, in my opinion and the opinion of many other uh, top-level activists, not saying that I'm one of them, but uh, the premier uh, alternative media publishing house in Zivert, in the Schwarzenegger sense of Zivert. She's also uh, been likened with uh, scholars for 9-11 Truth, she's been posted on that website, and one of her specialities is the death and replacement of Paul McCartney. Now, Sir Paul McCartney, in the late 60s, uh, which may have explained why, at the height of their touring career, the Beatles decided to stop touring and never did a tour again, basically. Only did studio albums. I thought that, I thought that was what, an interesting little factoid. Maybe some people will learn. So... Today, I would like to speak to her. Claire, welcome to the program. Hi, Vinny. How are you all the way down there? A, a bright, sunny day with a, a hint of a, 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 a wispy breeze of Fukushima radiation. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> well, we have a wisp of possible harp and chemtrail interference in a tropical storm here up in Toronto. Uh, obviously, we're not on the ocean, so we don't get the tidal. Um, well, we sort of do through the, the uh, St. Lawrence down into the Great Lakes, but it's not like a tidal whoosh. But we've had rain. We had big wind yesterday. It's supposed to get really bad late tonight, tomorrow. And my Skype wasn't working right yesterday because of the electromagnetic effects and stuff. So anyway, there you go. Um, <laughs> we're, we're suffering Sandy here. You know, not, not like New York City, but uh, still. Are you getting much news about... Uh, oh, I, I, that's a stupid question. Of course you're getting a heck of a lot of news about this, this storm. In, in fact, is anybody getting any news about anything else? <laughs> well, I, I don't watch TV anymore. I, I used to think people like that were weird, but I really, really don't. I just don't find... I, you know, I, 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 I do, of course, pick up news, and I, I do... You know, but I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm so disgusted so often at what they do and don't cover and what they repeat as news that I just don't. But I'm sure that most people, you know, that's that's what they're hearing about. I'm just noticing it's kind of a rainy gray day. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're sipping your coconut uh, drinks down there anyway. Well, yeah, uh, with a straw, a silly one. Pardon? We're drinking it with a silly straw. Oh, how fun. Mm-hmm. Now, um, well, my work, obviously, I mean, it, uh, it. you know, a lot of the things that people now do research on, and some of the characters that do research, to be honest, um, you know, it sounds silly off the bat. Uh, I actually you mentioned the Paul is Dead phenomenon, about which I did a lot of research some years ago, and I was actually shocked. Uh, I, I thought that it would be one of these things where finally I'd find, you know, a big big meme, a big conspiracy weird thing that was just so ridiculous, and you could really watch how people overdid the, the, the uncareful mythologizing. Like, uh, you know, oh, I think I see this, and oh, well, which is a form of explaining something, but it's not a very careful form. Um, and then I found, though there is that involved in the early clue structures and what people were trying to maybe make sense of, um, it turns out that the case has gone way beyond that now. So yeah, I'd love to discuss that because that was a shocker for me. I, I was a Beatles uh, enjoyer. I was a, a fan in that sense, you know, but I, I, I wasn't one of these people who 
you know, was into all these weird things. I thought it was just a stupid rumor. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we might get to discuss that as well as maybe 9-11 or mind control or those are the things that people, maybe maybe they know about, but they haven't done a lot of research on it or maybe they have, but, you know, I'm glad it's a chit-chat show. So take it away. Are you there? You sent me a video Hello? this morning about the hurricane and the satellite footage and imagery of the chemtrails basically buffering the hurricane so that it would miss the uh, uh, kind of southern um, United States, like Florida and what have you. It would, in fact, move uh, further northwards and, and hit uh, the United uh, the United States capital and, uh, and New York and, and, and what have you and travel upwards through Canada. Um, and you can see the storm actually get much, much larger as they add these yeah. chemtrails into it down in the uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico, and then you see it not grow larger, but simply go around the chemtrails um, being laid uh, up further north on the on the continental U.S. That buffers the uh, hurricane, still maintaining its size around, so that it comes upwards on the top of the United States and Canada in perfect correlation with that giant uh, 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 snowstorm that's coming in, and then right. In the middle now, you've got a big uh, snowstorm uh, hitting um, as a result of the hurricane, isn't it? Now, has anybody else seen a, a hurricane blowing uh, snow before? I don't know. Uh, it's a, you know, the, the interesting video that you're talking about, I forget the title, maybe you have it in front of you. Um, it also showed radar data that uh, were quite stunning to me because you can actually see like long lines of of um, EMF ra- radar data show up and disappear, show up and disappear. So it's not like um, pockets of things. It's like these long lines, like one over Tennessee is just this line of sudden radar data of this weird long line. I mean, it's very strange. And this person was saying there's the chemtrails adding to the storm intensity um, and then um, uh, pockets of uh, EMF interference, probably through a harp type event, harp being um, high altitude a royal research project, which isn't research, it's linked to the Navy, and it was in fact designed by its designer openly talking about the issue that he intended this to be partly for weather modification. He thought it would be a good thing. You could bring water to regions that didn't have it and you know, maybe militarily rain on the opposite army or something like that, right? But but he, the the fact is, once you have these things in play, um, you have to be careful that your weather is natural because, you know, I mean, there's a there's a kind of a big lie out there. So I think it was a really good video. Do you have the title of it uh, for the listeners? It's called Harp Engineering Frankenstorm Hurricane Sandy Caught on Satellite and Radar. So. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just give you the uh, the name of the YouTube channel there as well. Uh, Rev Michelle Hopkins. Rev Michelle Hopkins is the name of the YouTube channel. Harp Engineering Frank and Storm should come up with it. Hurricane Sandy, caught on satellite and radar in full capitals. Yeah, so R-E-V, Reverend, I think. Uh, I think that's what, you know, so she's she, Rev, R-E-V, Michelle Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Either yeah. that or she's a rev evolutionary. Yeah, I think I think that's the case. It's not perfect, um, and and you know th- th- I don't expect perfection. I've gotten to the point where, you know, I came from a scholarly background and artistic, so I was used to excellence, but not always perfection. Um, and then I was, ex- you know, I was used to at least in scholarly works to see fairly careful writing, fairly careful source backup, that sort of thing. But you do also get hypothesizing and, and reasoning about what's found. And so I, you know, when I began to look into citizen researchers um, of all types, some of them scholarly, some of them not so scholarly in, in background, I was a little shocked at the quality of the writing and some of the quality of the, the backing up. But when they are right, they're right. And if you can kind of get over the, 
idea that, well, anybody with something to say, it just has to be valid because they said it, or on the opposite end, if they didn't say it exactly right or they're not the very best proponent of the idea, still look into it because because they may at least have brought to your attention something that you needed to know or in some form. You know, they may not have, I always say some of these people are not their own best advocates. It doesn't mean the work is all bad or you know, and, and, and that's how I that's how I do my research. So I just, you know, want people to know I'm fairly careful, but I'm not dismissive uh, anymore on the surface. I, yeah, I used to feel that was... Claire, I can relate to that. I can't tell you how many people um, I've talked to who right, absolutely adore their research and, and what they do, but just can't stand them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's personality. I wasn't even going for the personality issues, but that's, oh, that's so, so much a problem. And, and then, of course, because people are so many types, um, you know, all very often the people who may say conspiracy research or that which falls under that umbrella in the broadest sense, once you get aware of certain conspiracies, literal plots, literal killings, literal events that were covered up, you also learn a lot of other stuff. You don't just learn about that. You learn other aspects of what scientific discoveries are out there, what's going on in other ways, you know. And um, some of these people are doing excellent work, but the way to, of course, tarnish them in, in the popular culture myth idea, propaganda, is to suggest that because some of them have serious personality quirks, that that means that they can't think. And of course, I mean, even other conspiracy researchers do this. So I deal with some every day on my inbox who are excellent about certain things, but boy, oh boy, you mentioned that this other person had a point, and they will, you know, think that that, that person is your hero just because you think intellectual honesty requires that we acknowledge this point or that it was valid given where the research was at the time. They're not necessarily a disinfo agent. I think there are some. But, but that in, in general, we, that those terms are thrown around in the so-called conspiracy research community a little too loosely because of people they don't like. You know? So it's a, it's a, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm well, on side. <laughs> I look at it this way. Uh, the thing that's really destroying humanity is competing against each other. I think the thing that will save it is collaborating with each other you know let, let's let's kind of uh, come together on what we agree on like for example claire are you at any point planning to show up at my door with a submachine gun and a black ski mask with with some uh with some sexy fisty cuffs and take me away to a fema camp do you ever plan on doing that a red ski mask maybe no okay. <laughs> we'll take that as a no because <laughs> but not... then there's mind control uh, uh, but, and, but, but and my, point we... is, <laughs> my point is my point is that said, that said, there ain't anything really that we're going to fundamentally disagree on. So let's come together on the points that we do agree, and the points that we disagree, we can leave those for another time. Perhaps until such a time when we've averted a crisis where people in black ski masks and submachine guns will come to our door and exterminate us. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the, the come together reference is interesting, of course, because that's a Beatles thing. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you sent me two Beatles songs this morning, so I had... Oh, Lennon songs, John Lennon songs, sorry. Um, I, and and I, he seemed I, like a... I've never heard those songs before, and it seemed very proto-truther uh, in, in, in a way, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I, I don't recall sending you some songs this morning from Lennon, but um, I... In fact, I don't think I did, but my little signature on my email is Give Me Some Truth. That yeah. is one of his songs. That That is one of the Lennon canon. Um, and uh, he... Um, I think that he actually would be one of us. I think that, that, that he was a... He was such a person. He was aware... Actually, the, if you want to call it original McCartney, or if we just leave it as McCartney, uh, was known uh, to have called Mark Lane of the JFK assassination, um, early fame, right, uh, a researcher, lawyer, and uh, asked him many, many questions about uh, his book, uh, Rush to Judgment. He wanted to know. These guys were not, um, uh, uh, you know, dumb minds. They They were... I'm trying for clean language. You did mention that. Uh, dumb donkeys. 
Um, they they were not, uh, and especially Lenin, who read voraciously. Like Lenin was a he was an intellectual artist. That doesn't mean his art was always intellectualized. Um, some of it is. But uh, very much an artistic metaphor guy, but he, he was very knowledgeable. In his later years, actually, he also got into UFOs. He was into, um, um, you know, the occult stuff, uh, partly through Yoko. She was very into the Japanese numerology and tarot reading stuff um, as well. Uh, but he wasn't just into the esoteric. He, 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 in his last interview for the Playboy interview, he mentioned, for instance, mind control. He actually mentioned, well, you know... Joe, I forget what the name of the interviewer was, Harry or something. Well, Harry, come on, let's get real. Art Linkletter's daughter ends up dead through a window from a supposed LSD flashback from 10 years before, right? And he said, now the CIA gave us LSD and we did something with it, right? They wanted to use it against us and we, you know, use it. He knew. And also by the late 70s, oh, the information... Oh, sorry, Claire, we're coming to break. We'll be right back with Claire Kuhn. That's K-U-E-H-N, C-L-A-R-E is the first name. Listen to us after the break at the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Ladies and gentlemen, to the show that's all about the criminals crippling the dwarfing economy, it's the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, five days a week, five till seven central, three till five Pacific, and I think it might be even be like midday till two p.m. and even Hawaii time or something like that. You know, if you're like sitting on Waikiki with an iPhone or something like that, you know, you can tune in with the uh, with the app at the AmericanFreedomRadio.com. How about them apples, huh? Or coconuts, as the case may be. My very special guest is Claire Kuhn, and we're talking about uh, John Lennon. And have you noticed, Claire, that almost every little conspiracy, in some esoteric fashion, seems to link into almost every other? Yeah, there are different kinds of links, depending on the situation, but, of course, there's the human link of uh, the types of things that people find themselves part of or witnessing or waking up to. And then there's the actual interlinked, um, if you want to call it broader intelligence service stuff. And then there's, you know, the corporate world and parts of it. You know, I mean, again, depending on the situation, the, the people have multiple affiliations. Um, you know, Timothy Leary, for instance, was interviewed by Walter Bowert and admitted he was CIA, uh, which was not known. I mean, it was long suspected. But his version of what he thought he was doing was helping. Did that mean that he knew of all the other stuff going on? No. It, it doesn't it doesn't mean he's bad enough. Yes. But again, you know, it's this kind of, and it's not always in those groups, but I mean, it is it's sort of like, and he's hanging out with, with Lennon um, promoting this idea of tune in, turn on, but then he always had to drop out. You see, so it's a kind of, yeah, they are linked. Um, we have, what, 20 minutes and then uh, five-minute breaks? That's the way the show goes? Um, more like 15 minutes and then a four-minute break. Okay, just curious. I forgot what you said. So I was just making a final point there when uh, the last 15 minutes was up. <laughs> which is that uh, Lennon, when he was talking in that interview, um, was making sure to get the point in. See, and um, that's what we need to do, is that in whatever forum we're, or group or family meeting, you know, we can't bring up all this stuff all the time or we'd be a downer, but that not to let certain BS come through. Like to say, well, you know, uh, actually there's something on that you might want to look into, and that's what he was sort of doing. And um, his idea was, he said, look, I did thousands of trips in the uh, on LSD in the 60s, and I never had a flashback. Like, like he's not sitting there going, you know, oh, maybe 10 years later, Art Linkletter's daughter, you know, died of a flashback. And the guy, by the way, who was with her that day was later... Uh, with another woman in another place where she also ended up dead. Um, so, you know, not that he knew that at the time, that hadn't happened. But this was the end of the 70s, early, like 1980 and late 70s, when the House Senate Committee on Intelligence had revealed, uh, limitedly, but had revealed the existence of 
hypnosis and drugging and mind control programs, plus a lot of very awful kill weapons and, and, and uh, diseases and stuff that have been developed by or through the CIA and or naval intelligence and or, you know, other things. And um, they began to, as soon as they, they, they first came out as we're great patriots, look at, we've, look at what we've done to support our spies. And then when it was found that, in fact, they were um, using unwitting Americans, albeit people from the lower caste, you know, prostitutes and, uh, um, you know, average uh, street people uh, as part of their experiments, but also students and whatever, the, the, the broad consensus was beginning to form of, wait a minute, this, this means you're experimenting on Americans unconsentedly? And they began to then try to cover their tracks. And that's how these things come out. People come out proud uh, there's a big book on on this, but more the drug stuff, and and it, it I forget the name of it. It's quite famous, but it 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 veers away from the issue of just how bad this is, really, because they keep making it sound silly. There's there were a lot of experiments that were just silly. I mean, they you know that that didn't work. Uh, but already in 1947, they had a woman on record that uh, under hypnosis would have. Uh, you know, emotional. It, it, hypnosis is an emotional thing. It gets you into a state where you're not really um, using your whole judgment capacity. You're not really aware of everything that's going on in your world. And emotionally, if you can be driven to tap into anger or resentment, you'll tend to believe more and more and more of it, like Othello in Shakespeare, who where Iago feeds him all this nonsense and he begins to then do it himself he begins to create a situation where his wife desdemona cannot uh look good she can't and he ultimately murders her uh, you know uh, um, husband wife killing that's uh, othello by shakespeare and it's brilliant and and what happens is these people under hypnosis um they can be induced to feed into some emotional state where they would be willing to kill or whatever their best friend and they said in 1947 great success um so if in 47 they already have this stuff then uh you know how far developed was it by the vietnam war uh by the 60s by the 70s 80s 90s you really have to think about the people living through those eras where some events might have been related like sirhan sirhan and possibly mark david chapman lennon's um, supposed killer uh, that you, you know that where that kind of thing could have been used, and they have to say, is there any evidence there was? By the way, about Lennon's killer, it's important to know the official police reports, the official police reconstructions. I think in Newsweek, anyway, um, were that Chapman was on one side of the alcove and he was shooting forward, kind of forward to his left, and that Lennon was somehow shot in his left shoulder blade straight through the heart from that angle. But the bullets actually went into the doorway for, uh, on, on Chapman's right. And the only angle where that would be true going through a man who's walking forward and he's shot through his left, through his heart, horrible stuff, but this is you know what you're dealing with in these sorts of things, um, would have been the doorway man. The doorman was on the other side of the alcove. Or there was supposedly a fellow who was a supposed maintenance worker who was in a little alcove within the alcove and could have shot in that direction. So, yes, maybe Chapman got off a shot or two, but Chapman might have been believing he did the killing when that may not be the case. So it's important to kind of know a little bit about these cases to say, well, they might be related to these other things. Um, I mean, I, I happen to really be a fan of John. I think that John's attempts were far beyond, you know, I'm an entertainer. That's not what a real artist is. They're a, they're a producer of, of visions and opportunities for your emotions and your ideas, right? And so the geniuses among them that also get political, they're, they're naturally suited to that role. And uh, I think he would be one of us. That's to answer your question of before the break. I think he would be one of us right now. He'd be out like Jesse Ventura on shows saying, ah, come on, Pierce Morgan, wake up about 9-11, you know, that kind of thing. It's um, my contention that there's an Illuminati bloodline, right? And it's also my contention that there's like a, a truth of DNA pile as well. 
kind of coursing its way through all of our veins, you know. And um, one question I like to ask my guests, because the answer is quite interesting as to, as to how they turn out. What did your father do for a living, Claire? What does my father do? Yeah. Oh. Well, my father and my mother, uh, my mother's now dead, but they uh, were, and he still is, teachers at a community college. My mother was a, prof- a teacher of uh, philosophy, um, uh, English, um, uh, art and cultural, political history. Uh, my dad, uh, and women's studies at one point, my dad uh, is a teacher of, um, has taken over some of my mother's courses in creativity, art, thinking, philosophy, moral philosophy, but he his background was more in French language studies and in geography, Canadian-American relations. He's a real news hound. I was not. I was actually really, uh, really, really uh, trepidatious of news. I stayed away from news shows. They always disturbed me. I wasn't a, um, you know, a, a, a conspiracy-aware, politically-aware person. I, I, I just always felt that, you know, people should really try to get along. Uh, and then I woke up to the, particularly the um, absolute argument, scientific argument, of Dr. Costello about the Zapruder film of the JFK assassination. Um, he's discovered that the, he, the optical perspective, which has been known since the 1400s, okay, I mean, this is not something that's <laughs> new science, um, that when you correct for the lens distortion and you account for position of camera movement, um, the, there are straight edges of buildings that are all fine, you know, they go into true, they become flat, just as they should, but certain things then become untrue. In other words, they're optically impossible on any planet. And thus, the film itself was not merely edited, but faked. That it was a composite image, and I used to work in dark rooms, and I know, of course, you can take an image, let's say a car with Kennedy in it, you can mask out around it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it across several frames or several images, and then you put different backgrounds, and you could put uh, Daffy Duck or whatever, and you, you're actually treating the image as components. And that's what they did, so that they could shorten the timeline of certain events, it could take out actions and where people were, and so all kinds of stuff. So that film, the, 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 the interesting thing about it is that the conspiracy researchers into the Kennedy assassination have been rather nasty, well, until fairly recently, about um, the claim that the film was fake, because they were so caught up in the back and to the left impression. And the irony is, as is often the case with truth, that the, that the, the back and to the left was itself an artifact of the film faking. The real issue with the film is that there's everything else is wrong. So that, um, so that what they, they looked for in the film and said, oh my gosh, this is proof of the faking, and, and ran with for so long and were so attached to, was itself throwing them off. Uh, they still then intended on using that film. And so they, they'd reconstructed roughly what had happened to the body and where people were, and it didn't match the film. When you realize the film was changed so, so radically that it is not, in fact, the events of the day. Uh, there's a little bit left in, I mean, but it's really not. Then, then you see that you shouldn't rely on the film, but rather on the reconstructions, and then you're off to the races. Everything else you put together from all your other evidence is suddenly can fly, right? Um, so the people who did the work, Fetzer and, and, and Costella and, and Healy and uh, uh, Lifton and so on, and, and Jack White, who's now dead as well, just died. Um, when, they, when they came out, they were actually accused by other researchers of themselves being disinfo agents for getting rid of this film. But Costella's arguments are a, a scientific law reality. He actually even accounted for things that you didn't need to, just to show that he'd accounted for them. So, um, and there are issues with the blur, the blur doesn't match in certain places, which shows that it can't have been a real image, original camera, original that was edited around. So, so when I woke up to that, and I realized I truly understood the argument, and I understood what those were saying against it, and how that didn't work scientifically, that they had to fudge everything in order to make their arguments. I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then I, I went on and became now what I am now, which is talking to you about these other things, because 
So yeah, the, the answer to my family is they they were both teachers, but uh, one more into the arts and philosophy, and the other one more into the news and social history stuff. Does that and language? Does that uh, help you any? Well, there's always some kind of an incident that wakes somebody up and uh, and activates them, and in some cases, not. Some cases you're just kind of born into a situation where it beca- where it's kind of inevitable. Other cases, you see people who have uh, worked themselves into uh, the system very, very nicely and have actually done very well in their particular fields, whether that be finance or teaching or uh, inventing or, or whatever, and then sure. something bad happens to them, something really, really bad, which uh, shatters their faith in the whole system. That wasn't me so much. I mean, my mother always took pride in, at least intellectually, being open, radically open. Um, not silly, stupid, but, but aware that you have to keep your ear to the ground. Um, sometimes the people you thought were kooky are, are not. They're, te- they're telling you oh, something. No, no. So, you know, that was sort of me. But this event catalyzed that. Well, let's talk about catalysts after the break at the com. My very special guest, Claire Cohen, K-U-A-E-H-N, I think. We'll be right back. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 Three three seven five three one to order your copy now. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel where warm-hearted humour and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments and suggestions of guests. Vinnie is building a hub to connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video, and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously, or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the VinnieEastwoodShow.com and click donate. We want to know which side you're on. Are you on the side of truth uh, that will hurt and then heal? Or are you on the side of lies that will comfort and then kill? It's the Vinnie Eastwood Show on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and incidentally the VinnieEastwoodShow.com and recently I've been getting a lot of guest suggestions and I've been sending back uh, all these guest suggestions with archives of these people that they're suggesting, which I've already interviewed on this show before. <laughs> so, such as the variance of, of, of the guests. It's, it's kind of hit and miss, but keep sending them in, because at the very least, you'll be able to listen to an interview you didn't know existed. Like with my very <laughs> special guest. 
Claire Cohen. And this is turning out to be a, a Christmas cracker of a one with the lightning and the thunder and the, and the chemtrails and the it, 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 it's, it's turning into be a very good show indeed. I hope you mean that. Uh, we've kind of been rambling, but I, you know, managed to get a few points in about these cases, yeah. Well, when you talk about um, conspiracies, I, you, you, you understand that there is a flow and a tangentry existence, kind of like a, it's almost like we're in a psychedelic holographic universe. You can't expect things to flow in a straight line. <laughs> no, they, they come in in um, Fibonacci spirals. Um, yeah. I've I've really gotten into mathematics lately, so now, I threw now, that one in. Now, uh, Fibonacci spirals, is that a kind of pasta? Could be. Could be, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, um, my back is just, I guess we should back up, because as a speaker, I should just say, I was at the Vancouver 9-11 hearings as one of the presenters this past June, um, I was a last-minute speaker because um, the people who were m- more closely allied with what I was speaking on all refused to come. Um, and uh, so I was brought in as a person who knew the work fairly well of what they were covering. I was there to talk about the work of Dr. Judy Wood, the physicist who has posited that directed energy weaponry may have been used um, to take down the Twin Towers. Um, and uh, the consensus of the hearings themselves overall uh, went in a different direction. Um, <laughs> isn't that the way sometimes? Um, but what I was presenting was the, um, the validity of, of, of the questions that, that Wood was answering um, and, and that there are things that she raised uh, which do need looking at, whether or not they were used on 9-11, that um, electromagnetic frequencies, um, there is quite a lot of, although disparaged, but quite a lot of support scientifically for weirdness, uh, weird situations that come with electromagnetic frequencies. And so um, because of that, because she's raising that, that is the thing we need. Claire, you'll be surprised and uh, and quite happy to know this but your voice is kind of cutting out and distorting a little bit on the line just as you started talking about electromagnetic frequency weapons and such isn't that funny but I, I mean, yeah you're still you're still a little bit uh, higgledy piggledy with that and I would put that down to perhaps uh, overloads on the on the, on the system because of the hurricane on the, on the, on the east coast maybe uh, I, I don't know okay <laughs> Yeah, you're cutting out absolutely terribly clear. I apologize about this. Um, hopefully, uh, American Freedom Radio will be able to reconnect you. Um, can Can you still hear me? Yes or no? I hear you. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll we'll we'll, ro- we'll have to ride out the storm, won't we? Boy, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, coming back no- nice and clear now. Okay. So um, the issue. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Check that. Check that. Not coming through nice and clear. Uh, could you, could you, oh, how about this? How about this? How about this? I can't hear you very well. So what we want you to do is hang up the phone and call, call us back into the board and I'll, and I'll, um, and I'll take your call through uh, that way. Hopefully uh, reconnecting will solve the problem. So if you've got a pen and, uh, or, have you got a pen and paper? Yeah, I can I can hear you, but it's really choppy. Okay. What well, number? Okay, 218-339-8525. Okay. Start. All right, so just quickly hang up and ring us back, and we'll, we'll, we'll take your call in there. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen... Um, I don't know. For some, for some reason, this hurricane ain't, ain't, ain't on my mind, and uh, <laughs> unsurprisingly, there's there's some uh, there's some bad stuff going down. You know, and and a lot of people they they give conspiracy theorists a bad name. I'm one of those people. Uh, we we <laughs> where you make up uh, uh, something just basically off the top of your head that may or may not be true, and, and it's just like uh, invariably sometimes it does turn out to be true. But I don't know. You you, you do have to wonder about this. Because the uh, the work of Dr. Judy Wood's been very, very, very um, uh, attacked highly, um, and as we were talking about before, some people are not their own best advocates. 
uh, there's there's a lot of that <laughs> going on uh, with with Dr. Judy Wood. Perhaps um, had some. Uh, well, I could explain to you uh, off off the air about that, but I don't I don't really want to go into it. Because uh, you know th- these private conversations with activists and, st- and stuff like that, I believe they, they kind of should remain uh, uh, at least semi-private, um, unless you know they, they uh, continue to attack you or, any- or or anything like that. Then 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 you come out and uh, all guns blazing. But you just basically sit back and uh, collect your information, and eventually you present it. My very special guest, Claire Kieran, is back. You're on the air. I'm on the line. Oh no no no! It's it's still really bad. It's mm. it's it's just. Uh, do you have a if you have a cell phone number, uh, you could uh, run to the uh, email there and and flick it through to me and we'll and we'll see if that might work. I don't have one, but we could change the topic. Change the topic to what? How to how to talk garbled on radio? Uh, interference due to the storm. The interference due to the storm. Yes. Well, Not I mean, we have a prime example right here, uh, don't we? Um, how could we clarify that this is due to the storm, though? That's what I said. Mm, mm, mm. It would be it would be interesting to find out. So let's let's have a look on Google, shall we? Uh, well, what's what's the name of the hurricane here? Is it Tracy or Jacinda or or some other girl that you don't that you don't like the name of? <laughs> Cindy. 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 Oh, okay, okay. Like Crawford, Hurricane Cindy, phone disruptions. Andy. All right, let's Google that on up. Worst of cell phone uh, disruptions yet to come, the FCC uh, says. No, nah, that's from uh, Hurricane Irene from 2011. Flooding and power outages from Hurricane Sandy led to internet and f- led to internet and phone service disruptions from the New York Post. Here's an article here. Flooding power outages from Hurricane Sandy lead to internet, phone, and service disruptions. Water welling into the southern Manhattan Drench, one of the world's densest communications nodes, taking out popular websites and forcing character, uh, carriers to reroute international traffic as commercial power was cut to the southern tip of Manhattan. Data centers and phone companies' facilities in the Wall Street area were forced to switch to diesel generators, and data centers that failed to keep running on backup power brought down news and gossip sites Gorka, Huffington Post and many popular New York based blogs so you know this is um, there's a lot of infrastructure in uh, New York that actually affects uh, the globe and stuff it took down, it took out the Huffington Post <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. and uh, can you hear me now yeah, oh, we've been able to hear the whole time but, it, but it, it's still remarkably uh, choppy um, I'd like to continue reading this article. Actually, that we've we've only really got a a minute uh, left till break. Uh, and by the way, Huffington Post is now back online. Uh, their web host, Datagram Incorporate, was, uh, said power was out and flooding in their basement was preventing their backup generators from pumping fuel. Internet connectivity from three providers was also down. Datagram said Verizon uh, Communications Incorporated, the biggest phone company in the region, had some of its nodes in downtown Manhattan flooded, shutting down phone and internet service and further uptown data centers hosted in a telecom hotel that spans a whole block and houses Google's New York headquarters were reporting outages as well apparently because backup power failed when commercial power was cut Monday evening there's a lot of um, uh, ramifications to all of this you know having your website taken down I, I can assure you is something to to <laughs> to have absolutely destroyed and uh, so we've not only had the outages of, in New York, but but because of the infrastructure that's based there, we're now having uh, well, uh, possibly outages and uh, things like that that are now affecting the United States, including uh, phone and internet connectivity. So I, I wonder if we can even uh, take some other callers on this and see how their internet and phone connections are, are holding up. And Claire, you can you can remain on the call um, as well, and maybe. Uh, 
just maybe the technical issues uh, will resolve themselves. There'll be some yellow jacketed individual out there in the driving rain and the and the pour, and the pouring uh, uh, sleet and the snow and the and, and the what have you, uh, precariously balanced on on a rickety ladder, uh, 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 trying to put two incredibly uh, dangerous high voltage uh, electrodes from a transformer together. <laughs> Let's hope they do their job and, and keep it safe, y'all. <laughs> you listen to the yeah. Vinnie Eastwood show. We'll be right back. The most technically plagued two hours in talk radio. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood show, broadcast in live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Um, I'm having some technical issues on my side, so during the break I'll be uh, uh, having to uh, reset the whole system here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is related to the thing or, or whatever, just the technical issues on my side, and I've been uh, advised by uh, the listeners that Claire's is coming through just fine. So uh, we also have another caller in, and I'm just bringing up the uh, caller line now, ladies and gentlemen, and I, I apologize for this, but uh, although you guys will be speaking, uh, just bear in mind I won't be able to terribly hear you. So, uh, Claire, I, I'd uh, welcome back, and also Chris uh, from Florida. You guys are kind of going to have to be the impromptu <laughs> impromptu talkers of the show at this point. Okay. Oh, hey, this is Chris, and I don't know if you can hear me. I just heard the last that that. Um, you wanted to check to see if um, you could receive calls, and um, our people were experiencing technical difficulties in the state. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I have been, and um, especially with Google, actually um, trying to get on with Chrome. The browser hasn't really been working, and um, uh, as far as I know, um, it's been pretty operational today. I think. Um, a lot of this stuff is um, legitimate. I just caught the show right when when you were um, asking about calls, so I'm not I'm not exactly sure like what the running topic is. But um, yeah, there has been some um, some definite definite issues. Can you hear me? Yeah, you you're, you're yeah. coming through clear. Oh, good. <laughs> I can hear both of you. In fact, it seems to have resolved itself. You know. It's, it's it's like you go over the hump and there's a little bit of a meh, but 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 it comes back and it's all and it's all G unit as uh, as my pimp daddy would say. Now Claire uh, is the uh, guest today, Chris, and she's uh, comes from a well, a uh, a scholarly background, and she has been talking about uh, JFK, John Lennon, and uh, mind control and a, 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 a number of other things. Ooh, that was my, my favorite topic. Yeah. So Which Matt, one? So, Chris, I just wanted to kind of uh, thank you for your call, and uh, we'll kind of right. let Claire proceed because the technical issues seem to have uh, come to an end. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Okay, right. no problem. Claire, anything to Hi. add? Hi. Yeah, I wonder if it was the topic. Um, I, anyway, uh, um, oh, 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 oh. let's do a test. Let's do a test. Uh, electromagnetic weaponry. No, nope, not breaking up. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't that. Okay. Um, the, the thing is that, uh, the, the research there, um, veered away from that as a possibility, uh, in the consensus of the people who were attending the conference. But that um, I was attempting uh, to raise the issue of um, what is seemingly weird about EMF, um, what is uh, valid about uh, some of the initial observations of wood, um, whether or not the ultimate uh, the ultimate uh, explanation will be that or something else. But that sh- that that there were things being noticed that have actually made their way into the explanations that have come out on Veterans Today now about um, something called a neutron bomb. It's not a regular nuke. It's not like, you know, you get this sort of big blast of heat. Uh, there's heat, but, but the, the flash is so brief, only about uh, 10 to 20 feet wide, you wouldn't see it. Um, it, it, it. It wouldn't necessarily... It is a whole bunch of technical issues. There's an article now 
about it um, uh, on Veterans Day's most viewed article right now, um, called uh, Mini Neutron Bombs, a Major Piece of the 9-11 Puzzle. And it involves the issue that it's possible that Wood was underplaying the heat issue, maybe not intentionally, uh, but that there wasn't so much like big blast of heat the way you would find at uh, or, or massive radiation, the way you would find at, um, you know, you know, just the blowing up of, uh, of, of uh, Hiroshima or Nagasaki, but rather a different, it's a different kind of a thing, because the products in the dust uh, that were found by the USGS service, um, they were chemists, and they weren't looking for physics issues that were related to nukes. They were just doing work on the dust. They found all these nuclear products, and the dust didn't see that as nuclear products. That's not what their training was. So the work seems to be legitimate, and so it must be accounted for. But in my talk, and there is a Vancouver uh, uh, PowerPoint that I did, I outlined some of the interesting things that would raise. So particularly on the weirdness of EMF in its own right, in its own right, it's a very interesting issue. Uh, what is physics and what have we? So we were talking about uh, Fibonacci spirals and pasta. Kidding. Uh, Fibonacci spirals and uh, the nature of the universe and mathematics. And so... That those are some of the things that, that I was raising um, in addition to uh, the 9-11 question there. So that was another thing that I did this past summer, um, I mean, this earlier in the summer. But um, about Lenin, uh, if, if we can cover the, the McCartney thing, that would be good, because I think it's something that's laughed at, and it's something I laughed at, and I'd love to actually bring it up. Is that something you'd be open to, Vinny? I intended for this to take up the entire second hour and random stuff to okay. um, to take up the first hour. What 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 in the first hour? Random stuff. Okay, random. All right. <laughs> the chaotic randomness of the universe. Um, well, uh, how about back to the mind control? There's an there's an amazing um, little short video uh, about eleven minutes long at Breath Check TV. Um, it's also on YouTube directly, but Brass Check TV has has it listed there. It's called Brainwashing in Jonestown. Now, Jonestown is an interesting question because, of course, the official story there is that there were several hundred people who all committed suicide in 1978. 1977-78 is when these revelations about mind control were coming out in the Congress, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Congress and Senate. And um, there were several, several hundred, oh, thousand, I think, for... 2,000 people there at that at that at Jonestown, and the um, head medical examiner for uh, Guyana uh, actually went there, and his report was that most of them died by injection and gunshot. They were not, in fact, uh, I mean, he found gunshot wounds on many. Um, also, there were no media allowed in the area, no civilians around in the area, and meanwhile, the special forces were ringing the area supposedly to help escapees but then suddenly the body count goes up by several hundred and then several hundred more so um the and the official explanation was uh, oh there were several hundred behind a shed and we just forgot to look there i mean it gets ridiculous uh so for anybody who wants to actually find some of these brass tacks um, about that case, uh, th there's a very good uh, uh, little video that was put up October 2012 called Brainwashing in Jonestown. And it's not just, you know, your average, um, even circumstantial argument. Uh, it's, it's some of the forensics questions. Uh, they found an entire shed with, I think it was about uh, 5,000 doses of methamphetamines in it or something. Uh, it seems to have been a combination of... Um, mind control and um, experimental uh, torture sites and stuff, as well as, of course, people who were disadvantaged. Um, they, like, they picked them up off the streets uh, through the Child Protective Services, people who were black and Latino particularly, um, the forgotten of the culture, you know. And they were also buying babies or getting babies from local Guyanese women who wanted to get rid of the babies. Uh, so... This, this was a, and there was a shootout of the congressman who went down there, um, and, um, and, and they managed to finish everybody off. So I, um, I think it's important to know what the medical examiner who actually was there said, because by the time they, um, they did that, they, they were allowed in as news services, the, the bodies were so decomposed that 
you know, fingerprinting or toxicology reports couldn't have been done. The, the toxic, toxicity of the body itself um, undoes the ability to do those tests. Of course, a, a gunshot wound might have been able to be tested because it might have hit bone, but none of that was done. So I think it's important to know that these things are quite real and they're quite ugly and uh, they can't be not going on now. Webster Tarpley suggests, for instance, um, are you still there? Of course. Oh, okay, okay. It, it sounded so silent, I thought, oh, where's Vinny? Well, uh, you're intensely interesting, Claire, that's why. Okay, because, I mean, you, you know, just like I'm trying to be slow, I'm trying to be, you know, open to, you can interrupt me any time, I'm just, yeah, chatting. I'll, t- um, I'll tell you what, but, take, yeah. it, take it at light speed, if you, if you will. All right. Okay. You want me to really? You do not want me to go at light speed. I'm usually people complain. <laughs> uh, well, okay. I, w- I won't. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Well, I can. I can go on. I know about a lot of these things. Is they're 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 really. Once you've done deep research, you found the key pieces of evidence. You can go very quickly. Bing, 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 bing. This is the argument. This is what you know leaves it out. This is where, and it's very hard to absorb that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, that kind of, you have to eliminate a lot of what you would broadly know and might be so, and then say, this is, this is the argument. Just as I said with Costello, this is the argument. This argument cannot be defeated. It doesn't mean that you don't have other arguments that might be defeated, but once this one is in place, that's it, right? The case is made. Um, it doesn't mean that there isn't more to know about it or you can't get at it some other way. But the case is made. If there's an absolute argument for something, then that's enough. I mean, it's enough to answer the basic question that's in people's minds. You know, was it a conspiracy or not? Or was there a cover-up cover up or not? Jonestown is a really interesting one because um, I, I find the mind control stuff very fascinating. I, I think it's uh, some of the creepiest. Uh, material, um, because it involves people who, you know, are misrepresented um, as, you know, just being happy or just having a, a regular role to play. And in fact, they're so manipulated that you, you know, I have a real, I have a real sympathy for the victim. And I think that um, we need to do justice to these people, uh, not just in this case, to, to say, you know, like, this is real stuff. These people are truly taken advantage of. Um, Webster Tarpley has made the point that the um, Guantanamo seems to be uh, basically a torture center like this, only one that's institutionalized, and that out of that come people who've been convinced and or brainwashed and or mind-controlled and or torture mind-controlled. There's layers to become American agents. Or fanatics. Uh, once somebody, of course, feels either if they're brainwashed into being an agent, or if they're, um, they're they become so radicalized against the horrible captivity that they're usable by others who are agents, you know, and to be the fanatic dupe, to be the fanatic terrorist. So it can work either way. You you can create a terrorist by making them consciously know that they're going to go out and be one and whatever, or you can. You can create it so that a person it becomes so radicalized against your bad treatment that you're very convenient and predictable. A lot of people don't think of that, and we think only of this sort of mind control. But anyway, Jonestown was horrible, and I think the timing, 1978, when it occurred, is is key because that's when this Senate Congress, uh, ho- ho- sorry, House Senate Committee on Intelligence was revealing mind control operations. And so this this one would have come out. You know, these cultic operations. Also, um, some fascinating work on serial killers. Um, a lot of serial killers have big connections. Uh, they are themselves crazy crackpot sickos, but they have connections where their, their, their proclivity is used, and sometimes some of the killings are pinned on them. Uh, and sometimes, um, you know, that, that really there's rings uh, that are doing killings or, or that they're part of. They might do two killings and then... The rest of them were doing six. And when you really study the cases, you find that, that the group that was doing those things is still active afterwards and does similar things in the region that you don't really know about. But that serial killer gets pinned for all of them. Now, they're still sick people. But it, the, that how people get used is a very important thing to ask. And um, this will lead in eventually, of course, to the issue of the Paul McCartney question. 
But um, I would uh, send people to the Dave McGowan sites. They're not perfect, but Dave McGowan has done a massive amount of work on the serial killers and also on um, Laurel Canyon uh, and the, shall we say, mind control, also mass propaganda element through Hollywood and um, music industries in L.A. And uh, his work on Laurel Canyon is called Inside the L.C., the strange but mostly true story of Laurel Canyon. It's not perfect. It's about 21 different web pages. Some of them are more, you know what I mean, they're more, um, a little bit, they're, they're more conjectural. Some of them are less conjectural. Um, and you get a, a feeling, if you stick with it, you're not really picking on everything. You learn a heck of a lot. And his work on the serial killers, um, I think it's, well, he's got a book out, actually. Dave McGowan has a book on serial killers, and he talks about David Lee, uh, Lucas, uh, it was, uh, what's his name? Yeah, I think David Lee, uh, Lu- Lucas and Otis and the relationship to Mexican cults. They were claiming in the late 80s, mid-80s, that they were involved in Mexican cults, and Lucas himself claimed that he was delivering drugs to Jonestown. Um, but anyway, Otis, who's a sicko, very sick stuff, you read about it, but he said, yeah, we went, you know, I got involved in this cult. It allowed me to to, to do the killing. But basically, um, you know, they, they were running a satanic cult down there. Well, who is they? And then no one believed them, right? But by the mid-90s, they were doing forensics in that area, and they found mass graves and satanic stuff in that Mexican region. Now, he claimed that wasn't their particular cult, that they were involved in a different one. But when you when you kind of wake up, that there is stuff found. We do know this stuff is existing. Some of it seems to be its own. You said how it gets connected. Well, there's people religiously. There's people, you know, just through sick proclivities. People who run through intelligence. There's intelligence infiltrating the sickos. There's sickos infiltrating the intelligence. It, you know, it's um, back and forth. But it's it's his work is really excellent on on the serial killers. Um, he has a little pop quiz that he did. It's not really a pop quiz. It's kind of tongue in cheek um, about serial killers. And you find out, my gosh, all the connections that they have. I forget it if it was Lucas or another one that was no, it was another one who um, who actually was able to arrange at fifteen or sixteen when they visited D.C. Washington D.C. a White House special White House Oval Office tour. So obviously he knew somebody. You know. Wow. Well, let's talk about more after the break, ladies and gentlemen. You listen to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Coming through on the other side in just a few minutes. Don't you go changing. And if you'd like to, join us in the chat room at the com. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the VinnieEastwoodShow.com No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV? 
and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel where warm-hearted humour and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments and suggestions of guests. Vinny is building a hub to connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video, and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously, or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the VinnyEastwoodShow.com and click donate. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com five days a week, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, New Zealand time for this week. But next week, Daylight Savings on November the 4th. So it means on uh, the 5th of November, remember, remember, that uh, local time in New Zealand will change uh, to midday till 2 p.m. instead of 11 a.m. till 1. It's one of the uh, interesting things that happens with uh, time zones when you're broadcasting live to a different country. My very special guest is Claire Kuhn and uh, we're talking about uh, mind control and we're going to be leading into uh, Paul McCartney and how he was replaced and we only have two segments and, and, and I've not watched a number of documentaries on this including one that was based off uh, tapes that were allegedly sent by George Harrison of the Beatles. Oh about, no. Uh, well, oh no, that's just info. We'll uh, get to that. Yeah, and and the winged beetle so, as well. I'll just, okay, so I'll just very quickly tell you which places to look for this stuff. About I've already gone over the Laurel Canyon thing. You also want to go to Newsletter sixty five uh, in Dave's Web D A V E S W E B dot C N C Host. That C N is Nancy C Host dot com. Newsletter 65 is the quiz on serial killers. It's very informative. Um, and the other page is c- called Something About Henry. There's Something About Henry. And it's, it's the page that goes over sort of information on this Henry Lee Lucas and Otis and stuff. So I just, just sending people places they can look into. It's really stunning. Now, McCartney, you wanted to say, um, I try not to lead with the, the idea this is a fact he was replaced. Um, this is a conclusion based on a number of things. Um, the Highway 69 Entertainment that put out that last testament of George Harrison seems to be a disinfo group. That does not mean, of course, they have no truths in what they say. They've also come out with that thing about Obama, the you know, truth from my real father thing, which links Obama into supposedly... Uh, the very left-wing uh, Marxist group uh, around this guy was also doing mind control. Now, the mother does, his mother, Stanley Ann Dunham, does seem to have been linked to this guy. But the idea that this guy's his father doesn't seem to hold up. So you get this half-truth to, to, to pull people away from a true picture of what the birth certificate were, you know, and all that stuff about Obama. Now, the Highway 69 Entertainment came out with a, sh- a thing on Paul. And it came out right when the big movie, the, the first big movie by a person call, calling himself I Am A Phony, P-H-O-N-E-Y, on YouTube, had been out for a couple of years doing leaks about the McCartney question. And when he came out with his big movie, The Winged Beetle, um, linking McCartney to Crowley, magic, that sort of stuff, um, out comes this movie. And it came out from Highway 69 Entertainment. And it has a an actor doing the voice of, and it's really bad, the voice of, um, of Harrison. And it also uh, it has, it has a lot of errors about what went on. But it also, it, it, it does bring in MI5, but it tries to make, supposedly if this replacement occurred, if, if the replacement occurred, let's say, um, it tries to make the second McCartney look really fine. You know, he's a good guy because he came into the Beatles and he helped out and, isn't he great? There's that element, and that they were just afraid that all the all the fans would kill themselves if they knew that McCartney had died. And MI5 guy tries to help out, and that's the sort of the nicey version of uh, of, of the movie you watched. Now the reality is a little different. Um, the case actually involves not merely clues on albums, clues on album covers, statements made, 
it's not merely a circumstantial or mythic case. There is now a, a group of two forensic scientists who, have, who work with photo analysis, and you do know that it is possible to analyze someone's face if you have excellent quality, uh, certain kinds of photos. It, it can't be really bad lighting. It can't be they're tilting their head really wildly. You can't have a lot of lens distortion. But if you have uh, certain qu qualifications in your photogra photographs, you can, in fact, tell who somebody is. And it's based on proportions. Now, if I gained a lot of weight, lost a lot of weight, there you'd be able to tell. You could you can tell the cheeks are rounder and the you know there's double chin or whatever. But certain proportions do not change. If you have a good quality photograph frontal, there's the there's the inner eye. There's up to the top of the forehead. There's down to the basically the base of the chin if the mouth is closed. There's a general jaw width unless they're clenching their jaw and it can go a little wider. Um, you know, there's the temples, there's the basic head height, things like that. This group of forensic scientists um, thought that it was a bunch of bunk, just as I did. And they went in 2007 or eight in Italy. This is another way they controlled the news, right? Sort of like it happened over in Italy, and then it comes out in Wired Italia, the Wired magazine for Italy. Um, and then, of course, that can be kind of contained. It's in the Italian language, and only the people following the case really know about this. But uh, anyway, so they did this, this thing, comparison of photographs, and they found two very excellent, straightforward, frontal, nicely lit photographs of Paul McCartney in 1966 or before that, like before the end of 66. And they did the, the kinds of craniometric uh, analysis and, and facial analysis proportion, leaving room for a couple of millimeters change, whatever. But basically, you know, two quarters to three quarters to seven eighths, that's sort of a measurement on these medically less changeable factors in a human facial skull situation. And then they found a lot of photographs, of course, in 67 after. And they said, not only does do the two before 66, <laughs> before 66 match themselves and the ones after 67 match themselves, they don't match each other, extremely do not match each other. And second of all, there are a few photographs in 67, particularly on the Sgt. Pepper's album, even correcting for the lens distortion stuff, where it doesn't match either. What they've done is they've actually doctored the second guy so that they've rounded out the jaw massively, and then it sort of looks rounder, but it's anatomically impossible. It gives you the impression of a shorter, rounder face. And a lot of people don't realize quite how authoritative that sort of analysis is. They're, they're, they, they, they don't understand. This isn't about, um, do you have an exact skull measurement? What this is is, Given all of these proportions, if suddenly five eighths becomes, you know, three quarters, and the other one that was six twelves becomes half, oh, sorry, that is six well, six twelves is half, but I mean, it becomes a uh, five eighths or something. These are radically different um, measurements. They're not. They're not close, and they, they're a combination that makes a face. So this work has come out. Now, no one's challenged it. Um, the reason is, you know, usually is dismissive. Why would we bother to even challenge it? But it's well argued and it's well presented and you can go and understand it or choose not to understand it. Um, they also, and having been an artist, I understand proportions and what can and can't be changed in a proportion without changing all the other stuff. You know, in, in a certain way. and then you would notice those changes. They're, they're <laughs> so that's how we actually tell what a person looks like. We, our bodies, act, our, our minds look at proportional changes. Um, so, yes, he was replaced. Now, that's the forensics argument. Is it DNA? No. He has refused to come out with fingerprints or DNA or anything like that. We do, in fact, have, however, women who have uh, claimed babies with the original Paul, with Paul, um, who submitted their stuff. They got this response back, and they, they, they kept coming back that, no, he wasn't the father. Now, you could see it as these women are just fraudulent, you know, but there were several of them around the world that, that, that you know, like, the pretty good chance of really having had McCartney's baby. These guys were not exactly using rubbers, you know. And, um, and, and some of them even had the handwriting analysis. The, the, the handwriting analysis came back as this was a right-handed guy who wrote the letter that said, you know, I... And they said, he, 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 he's gotten someone else to sign all this stuff, and he's gotten someone else to do the blood test. But as, as a matter of fact, it seems to be that he is someone else. It's a very different question. And, of course, um, 
um, uh, what's his name, uh, the press manager, nice guy for the Beatles there, uh, Derek Taylor, he came out and gave one of these blandishments that was worthy of Alan Dulles about the Kennedy assassination because he came out and said, well, we don't need to provide proof of who he is because you don't need to prove who you are. You don't need to prove that you exist. You just exist. And so, like, well, of course, that's not true. If, if there is a huge question, you can, in fact, prove who you are in a number of different ways. So a lot of people thought it was so silly. So I'll back up. In late 66, the Beatles were, in fact, very tired of touring. They were very overwhelmed by the crowd craziness. It's quite real. It was, a, it was a new phenomenon. They were, you know, pawed, grabbed, mauled, whatever, wherever they went. And the, at the end of August, uh, at the Melody Makers Awards, Paul McCartney was seen. There's footage of him. And after that, there's this hiatus where supposedly Paul stayed in England for a while and then supposedly went down to Kenya, France and Kenya, down with Mal Evans, who was one of their two roadies, along with Neil Aspinall, who later became head of Apple. And he goes, he goes down to Kenya in the Kishi Highlands, and he's hanging out, and then he comes down, and there's footage of him. Now, I would say he very much looks like a different guy, but there are people who claim that, no, 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 it isn't. So anyway, he comes back, and suddenly Mal is firing... Uh, George Kelly, the longtime butler of Paul, not letting the, the second Paul see George Kelly. Um, uh, Mal Evans ended up dead in 1975, telling a friend that the book he was going to publish about the Beatles, uh, he was supposed to get royalties, uh, he was going to get royalties, uh, so he was going to publish it, and he was also going to get royalties for having helped Paul, the second Paul now, um, write Fixing a Hole in Sgt. Pepper's. Um, so, and then he ends up dead by the LAPD. Uh, and uh, the, his ashes are lost, his book goes missing. Um, very strange. So anyway, um, so, so, so back in 66, uh, they are hanging out, and of course, uh, John is down, in, down making a movie in, in Spain. Ringo goes to meet him. George Harrison goes out to India. The story when they came back was, we were so sick of touring, we don't want to tour, and we don't, uh, you know, we, we were just uh, relaxing. Here we are. But as a matter of fact, in, Jan- in January, Feb- February 1967 already, um, they put out a little ad in their Beatles magazine, Beatles fan book, uh, that was only com- coming out in England at the time, saying, there's a rumor going around London that Beatle Paul McCartney has died in a crash, um, and we just want you to know he's fine. Now, some people see that as an early planted, you know, uh, a suggestion, but it seems rather to be, especially if you know the forensics, seems rather to be that there was already this rumor going around. Some people knew and people were suspected. And the, the, uh, the photographer who wangled his way onto the movie Help in 65, I think it was, 64, 65, um, his name is, uh, he's, he's Greek, he's Greek, I think. I'm forgetting his name right now. Um, he actually uh, has come out in I Am A Phony's movies um, talking about how everyone knew Everyone around them basically knew. But, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, and they, like, w- are you going to expose it? Are you going to make a big thing? And we all felt bad for, you know, for them. He actually had a break into his house to steal negatives. He claims it was Paul McCart- the second Paul McCartney's man, you know, coming in and, and trying to find the negatives. They didn't find anything. He says, I have them in my, in my box. We do know that almost all materials, including the early photographs of the Beatles, which very clearly show the original Paul as a very young man that were taken by um, uh, uh, Astrid in 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 um, um, in Germany uh, have just been bought up mysteriously. They were on auction and then suddenly they're off auction. Um, so it seems as though this second Paul is buying up stuff. Now, the movie you watched was basically an attempt, of course, to say, well, you know, he's a good guy and he's trying. And I think that's actually part of the story. I think that people who who would hate, um, you know, we, we, have to, we have to realize kind of uh, what the psychologies of the people involved would be. I mean, obviously, if you're now a part of a band and you're actually trying to hold it together, they always claim that Paul was the one trying to hold it together. Um, they've, they've tried to fudge the story a little bit. Uh, you get comments, for instance, by Jeff Emmerich, who does not have this in his book, but in an interview, jo- his wonderful book, he's got an amazing book on uh, engineering the Beatles and stuff. But um, he was their sound engineer. And he, uh, he commented, and this is in the I'm a Phony movie, The Winged Beetle. 
he comments about how the Sergeant Pepper's sessions were just weird. I mean, they were like different people, and it was there was a lot of sadness, and uh, you know, things. I think things were just getting bottled up, uh, and it was really Paul that kept it going. Now, what were they so sad about? Just not touring. Um, you know, so again, you can make a circumstantial case with those things, but once you know that it's gone beyond that, then you, you can see that the, that they were in fact trying to live their lives. Now, John Lennon actually admitted this, um, in one case, he did an interview in 1970 about the Beatles breakup and very fascinatingly at about, I think it's about 13 minutes in, might be 30 minutes, I'm not sure. Um, he's talking about, you know, the idea that everything changed after Brian Epstein died, which is the middle of 1967. And then, you know, and of course, they, some of them say, oh, everything changed after 66. Harrison said that. And then he said it was like, well, it was, you know, everything changed. And then he starts talking about India as if it was his going to India that was changed. But the context was Paul before that. Well, Lennon was talking about, um, you know, the Beatles break up in 70, and he said, uh, um, you know, well, everything changed when Epstein died, blah, 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 which he was very affected by. And then he said, you know, and I was the kind of guy who, you know, they made a suggestion, oh, write a song. Oh, okay, well, I'll write a song. Okay, I'll write a song. And I think that that was actually the mentality that he really did go into in the end of 67. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to just try to deal with this, right? Well, have, you and noticed, after- <clears throat> have you noticed, clear that when you're trying to do the right thing uh, for other people, you can sometimes wind up getting used by them? You listen to the Vinnie Eastwood show, my very special guest, Claire Kieran. We'll be right back. Some kind of way out of here, said the winged beetles of the big Rothschild spider. Listen to the Vinnie Eastwood show on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And incidentally, the Vinnie Eastwood show.com. You can join us in the chat room there. And if you want to talk after the break uh, with myself and with other other listeners from, a, from around the world, you want to make a friend, you know, or, or, or something like that. We've had people calling in from Aussie who apparently just live just down the road from each other and went and visited and all that kind of stuff. Join us in the chat room at the Vinnie Eastwood show.com. Give us your Skype details and we'll add you into uh, the call. So, Claire Cohen is my guest, and we only have one final uh, segment to wrap up the uh, Paul McCartney saga, which I think is a remarkably insufficient time frame in which to do this, because there's so much information and so much disinformation that needs to be cleared up that it is uh, an impossible task. So, that said, what do you reckon you'd like to leave us off with, Claire? Well, I can, uh, first of all, say that I did a much more extensive interview on this issue at uh, radiofetzer.blogspot.com. You can type my name in C-L-A-R-E. It's the Irish spelling, not the French one with an I. So it's C-L-A-R-E, not C-L-A-I-R-E. Um, and the last name is Kuhn, as you said, K-U-E-H-N. And you'll find that show, um, the last three segments particularly. And it, it goes into much more detail about the different clues and the forwards and backwards and all that stuff. But what I, what I will say about this case is that it is a genuine case. One of the problems with the, with the, the two Pauls is that the first one had a very small palate. He had very crunched teeth. His upper teeth, lower teeth were very crunched. Now, that doesn't mean he had a terribly small head, but for his head size, his teeth were smaller. And, or, sorry, larger, you know. And that uh, they make the point, these forensic scientists, that... Um, in order to correct that, you would need palatal surgery, which was available in the 60s, um, but it was massively bloody. It would take a year with a head brace to recover. They only did it for people who had severe trauma or you know, severe need. You wouldn't do it for a singer. And historically, that's eliminated because we know he was given interviews with no head brace on. So it's eliminated historically from the possibilities. Yet he shows up later with okay teeth. Um, that's another issue. But uh, regarding this stuff about um, about everything's related and and uh, what these issues are, if you if you see that um, it looks oh oh I was actually talking about John. So what he said in this interview was um, he says so you know so uh, basically once uh, Brian Epstein died at sixty seven mid sixty seven. He says, you know, and, and we made an album after that. I don't know what it was, you know, Sergeant Pepper's. Uh, well, I can't remember. Now of course. <laughs> Sergeant Pepper's, Epstein was very involved in. Um, Epstein was, I mean, John wouldn't get that wrong. And you can actually hear Yoko giggling and John's voice goes down. You can just hear the hint of a smile. Um, and then it's gone. And then he, 
goes on and he talks about Epstein, and then he talks about Magical Mystery Tour, which did follow Epstein's death and which did have him also in trauma reacting out of just getting things done. So the I am a phony, so I, John, in a way, he did say, but, but, um, but, but, you know, as you said, you can end up getting used. And I think once something is happening, once it's sort of going on around you um, and you've acquiesced part of it, you can get caught up in it and then you, you don't dare say something or who's going to believe you. And, and then you get defensive and you end up actually trying not to tell the truth, but you're sort of telling the truth through the songs, but you're not really going to admit it publicly. And I think it also made him very much more aware of conspiracy and of agendas in the longer run because he was part of this this one. No, so you have to ask about the current Maca. What is his role? Well, there is some suggestion that he may have been, in a sense, a, an interested fan. Uh, he may have been already the body double for, for Paul. Um, there's a whole thing wasn't, about who signed hold, which. Hold on. Wasn't there an American bandstand competition for a Paul McCartney lookalike? There was, and some people suggest that perhaps he was found through that. Although, it's unknown. It's, uh, that stuff is probably unknowable right now without further revelation. Um, and on November 9th, there will be a big movie coming out from I Am A Phony, which she's been building up to since 2006, um, which will supposedly is called The Revelation, and it will be out uh, supposedly making the fuller case. One of the things about I Am A Phony's work that is troubling is that um, he does do some minor deceptions in it. He doesn't just give the original audio of everyone's interviews. Um, and I think the reason for that is it's an extremely artistic movie, um, and it, it, the, not just to apologize for it, but I think that the intention is to give you the feel of what, what would it sound like if these people had sort of told you the truth. So he does some fancy editing with some of the interviews. But other than that, it's a fairly straightforward uh, movie. Um, at the very end, he shows a, a page from Mal Evans's lost book, and it does look legitimate. It looks like a very old book. It has Mal's style, absolutely, of speaking. He was not a particularly intellectual guy, and it has his, his sort of phraseology. It, it, it really strikes you as an old book page with all the hand corrections and everything typeface. And in that book page, if you pause the movie and you look at it, and then you pause it about two seconds later when he has a close-up of the bottom, you do your research. If you actually go beyond the initial impressions of, oh, this is BS, or oh, this is great, you actually watch it as a research tool. You can find that this, this page seems to be a legitimate page from a supposedly lost book from a murdered guy who was murdered by the same guy who helped cover up Bobby Kennedy's death in, in the LA, LAPD. Um, and um, basically, uh, uh, this, web, this page discusses the, the period when um, uh, Paul came back and um, um, I'm on the radio. I'll be out in about 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, somebody just asking a question here. Um, so, you know, that he's discussing at that page in the book um, the issue of, uh, well, I had to go and tell George Kelly that he was fired. I felt horrible, um, you know, and he doesn't actually say Paul was replaced. What he says is the clinic in Kenya did a great job. Everyone was surprised it was really happening. Um, uh, and John was in utter horror. Of course, John then is described as lashing out at Pete Best. Uh, somebody made the suggestion that that, uh, that uh, Pete should be told this was the previous drummer to Ringo. Ringo, and John is reported in this page of saying, "No, no, I don't want Pete involved. No, no, I don't want it." And I think that that's the powerlessness. And you can't control what's totally going on, or you feel you can't. You lash out at an issue that you you feel you can lash out at, right? Um, so it has a real ring of. Um, um, you know, genuineness about this. And, and Mal is talking about uh, how overwhelmed he was that he, he hadn't protected them. And he, these were his, 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 like his children. He's a very protective big guy. He's called The Rock. They actually, um, you know, uh, abused him a little bit, misused him a little bit. But he, he, he was really their, their stable, you know, stable guy in the, in the group. Uh, as, as a supportive thing. So I think that um, this new Paul, because he has long been talking about, uh, people have said that he was into Crowley. Um, he was definitely into William S. Burroughs and the avant-garde. He gave an interview for the Process Church stuff. Um, he was uh, heavily into the magic scene, according to several people close to him, that 
even if he really wanted to be in the band, um, did he help? Did he help murder Paul? Was it an accident? Was did somebody else do it and get him in? Did he find out later? Um, there's a lot of questions uh, about that, and yet he's a Beatle. I mean, in the end, he contributed to what we have, and he is. So there's a tragedy in his life, though. There's also um, a complicity in, in, of course, even if it wasn't in the death, in, in the making of the cover-up happen, you know. So it's kind of like we get a lot of music because he was still there. I mean, there, there's somebody was still there holding the band together. But at the same time, there are things that are culpable. you got to lay the correct blame on. Like, for instance, you can, you can blame the Nazis for certain things, you don't blame them for others. You can blame Henry Lee Lucas for certain things, but he shouldn't be wrongly accused of certain deaths. And that kind of thing. It doesn't make them an all good or all bad figure, you know. So um, the I'm a phony thing on November 9th um, is supposedly the big revelation, but the case is already made through the facial forensics. Like, in fact, it's already made, and they do explain very, very clearly what their arguments were and what they eliminated and how shocked they were and what they accounted for in their medical forensic, you know, visual um, accounting job uh, as, as facial forensic scientists. Um, now, there is a guy, uh, and his name is, um, I think it's uh, Gary P. Uh, Anderson or something, who wrote I, The Walrus of Paul, and he had talked to a friend in the body farm who started to claim you know, they do the body test, right? They, they, they strip you of all, it's ugly, but they strip you of all your skin and stuff, and they do, like, craniometric analysis without the skin on. And this guy was saying, you can't analyze somebody's identity without, with the skin on. Well, that would mean you can't do any facial recognition software. You, you, you can't tell who you are by looking at you. You know, I mean, this is ridiculous. The issue is once you strip the skin off, you can do a bone-for-bone bone comparison of some other you know, image of a person or if they had a lot of fat or whatever, you can do that. Or, But, but it, it's a different kind of an analysis. Once they have their skin on, you can adjust for what about, definitely has more fat. What about maybe a DNA analysis? Has anybody asked uh, Paul for it? He won't. Well, as I said, the only, the only acknowledgement of his DNA, no one has gone and done it. You'd think that somebody would have bothered or stolen something from a cup of coffee, but they haven't. Um, is that these women who have had babies by Paul claim they have? Um, they all have been. They all have findings that you know it isn't. It isn't the father of their baby, and uh, some of them have quite good circumstantial cases that that this was the baby of Paul McCartney. They were known to be around. So um, and that it was a right-handed guy who signed the letter. So in that sense, we do, but we don't have any offered. Oh well. I guess I guess maybe that could be something to uh, look for in the future. You know, maybe a public campaign. November ninth, November ninth, supposedly. I am a phony. It's coming out with this big revelation. Ten and days. And look up the forensic. Ten days, ladies and gentlemen, and I am a phony. Will will give his big fat revelations. Isn't that fabulous? Claire, you're fabulous so. too. Thank you so much for your time today. And we, we Thank have to you, do, Vinny. We have to do this again sometime and do a, do a couple of hours where we just talk about Paul McCartney so we can lay out as much as humanly possible. Okay. All right. Thanks, Vinny. Thank you. And uh, hopefully you don't get washed away in a tidal current of storm surge. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, as well for listening in. We'll see you again sometime. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, 
in any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Show.com. No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel where warm-hearted humour and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments and suggestions of guests. Vinnie is building a hub to connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video, and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously, or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the vinnieeastwoodshow.com and click donate. researcher, lawyer, and uh, asked him many, many questions about uh, his book, uh, Rush to Judgment. He wanted to know, these guys were not, um, uh, uh, you know, d- dumb minds. They, they were, I'm trying for clean language, you did mention that, uh, dumb donkeys. Um, they, w- they were not, uh, and especially Lenin, who read voraciously. Like, Lenin was a, he was an intellectual artist. That doesn't mean his art was always intellectualized. Um, some of it is. But uh, very much an artistic metaphor guy, but he, he was very knowledgeable. In his later years, actually, he also got into UFOs. He was into, um, um, you know, the occult stuff, uh, partly through Yoko. She was very into the Japanese numerology and tarot reading stuff um, as well. Uh, but he wasn't just into the esoteric. He, 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 in his last interview for the Playboy interview, he mentioned, for instance, mind control. He actually mentioned, well, you know, Joe, I forget what the name of the interviewer was, Harry or something. Well, Harry, come on, let's get real. Art Linkletter's daughter ends up dead through a window from a supposed LSD flashback from 10 years before, right? And he said, now the CIA gave us LSD and we did something with it, right? They wanted to use it against us and we you know, use it. He knew. And also by the late 70s, oh, the information... Oh, sorry, Claire, we're coming to break. We'll be right back with Claire Kuhn. That's K-U-E-H-N. C-L-A-R-E is the first name. Listen to us after the break at the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Ladies and gentlemen, to the show that's all about the criminals crippling the dwarfing economy, it's the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, five days a week, five till seven central, three till five Pacific, and I think it might be even be like midday till two p.m. and even Hawaii time or something like that. You know, if you're like sitting on Waikiki with an iPhone or something like that, you know, you can tune in with the uh, with the app at the AmericanFreedomRadio.com. How about them apples, huh? Or coconuts, as the case may be. My very special guest is Claire Cohen, and we're talking about uh, John Lennon. And have you noticed? clear that almost every little conspiracy in some esoteric fashion seems to link into almost every other yeah there are different kinds of links depending on the situation but of course there's the human link of uh, the types of things that people find themselves part of or witnessing or waking up to and then there's the actual interlinked, um, if you want to call it broader intelligence service stuff, and then there's, you know, the corporate world and parts of it, you know. I mean, again, depending on the situation, they, they, people have multiple affiliations. Um, you know, Timothy Leary, for instance, was interviewed by Walter Bowert and admitted he was CIA, uh, which was not known. I mean, it was long suspected, but 
his version of what he thought he was doing was helping. Did that mean that he knew of all the other stuff going on? No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't mean he's bad enough. Yes. But again, you know, it's this kind of, and it's not always in those groups, but I mean, it is a sort of like, and he's hanging out with, with Lennon, um, from a silly one. Pardon? We're drinking it with a silly straw. Oh, how fun. fun. Mm-hmm. Now, um, well, my work, obviously, I mean, it, uh, it, you know, a lot of the things that people now do research on, and some of the characters that do research, to be honest, um, you know, it sounds silly off the bat. Uh, I actually, you mentioned the Paul is Dead phenomenon, about which I did a lot of research some years ago, and I was actually shocked. Uh, I, I thought that it would be one of these things where finally I'd find you know, a big a big meme, a big conspiracy weird thing that was just so ridiculous and you could really watch how people overdid the 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 uncareful mythologizing. Like, uh, you know, oh, I think I see this. And oh, well, which is a form of explaining something, but it's not a very careful form. Um, and then I found, though there is that involved in the early clue structures and what people were trying to maybe make sense of. Um, it turns out that the case has gone way beyond that now. So yeah, I'd love to discuss that because that was a shocker for me. I, I was a Beatles uh, enjoyer. I was a, a fan in that sense, you know, but I, I, I wasn't one of these people who, you know, was into all these weird things. I thought it was just a stupid rumor. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we might get to discuss that as well as maybe 9-11 or mind control or those are the things that people, maybe maybe they know about, but they haven't done a lot of research on it, or maybe they have, but, you know, I'm glad it's a chit-chat show, so take it away. Are you there? You sent me a video Hello? this morning about the hurricane and the satellite footage and imagery of the chemtrails basically buffering the hurricane so that it would miss the uh, uh, kind of southern um, United States, like Florida and what have you. It would, in fact, move uh, further northwards and, and hit uh, the, United, uh, the United States capital and, uh, and New York and, and, and what have you and travel upwards through Canada. Um, and you can see the storm actually get much, much larger as they add these yeah. chemtrails into it down in the uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico, and then you see it not grow larger, but simply go around the chemtrails um, being laid uh, up further north on the on the continental U.S. That buffers the uh, hurricane, still maintaining its size around, so that it comes upwards on the top of the United States and Canada in perfect correlation with that giant uh, 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 snowstorm that's coming in. And then right in the middle now, you've got a big uh, snowstorm uh, hitting um, as a result of the hurricane, isn't it? Now, has anybody else seen a, a hurricane blowing uh, snow before? I don't know. Uh, it's a, you know, the, the interesting video that you're talking about, I forget the title, maybe you have it in front of you. Um, it also showed radar data that uh, were quite stunning to me because you can actually see like long lines of, of um, EMF ra- radar data show up and disappear, show up and disappear. So it's not like um, pockets of things. It's like these long lines, like one over Tennessee, just this line of... <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's the lighter side of genocide, because in a world so full of chaos and madness, if you lose your sense of humour, you'll likely go friggin' nuts. And we are broadcasting live from the fabulously fluoridated capital of Auckland, New Zealand, the island change nation in the sunny slave South Pacific. Everybody drink their drinks out of half a coconut in New Zealand. That's right. It's a fact. I read it on eBay. My very special, my very special guest today is from Canada, I believe, and her name's Claire Cohen. She's a contributor, or, or at least uh, she appears in the uh, rankings as next to Veterans Today, um, in my opinion and the opinion of many other uh, top-level activists. Not saying that I'm one of them, but 
uh, the premier uh, alternative media publishing house in the world, in the Schwarzenegger sense of the world. She's also uh, been likened with uh, scholars for 9-11 Truth. She's been posted on that website. And one of her specialities is the death and replacement of Paul McCartney. Now, Sir Paul McCartney, in the late 60s, uh, which may have explained why, at the height of their touring career, the Beatles decided to stop touring and never did a tour again, basically. Only did studio albums. I thought that I thought that was what an interesting little factoid. Maybe some people have done. So today I would like to speak to her. Claire, welcome to the program. Hi Benny, how are you all the way down there? Uh, a bright, sunny day with a, a hint of a, 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 a wispy breeze of Fukushima radiation. It's just gorgeous. Well, we have a wisp of possible harp and chemtrail interference in a tropical storm here up in Toronto. Uh, obviously, we're not on the ocean, so we don't get the tidal. Um, well, we sort of do through the, the uh, St. Lawrence down into the Great Lakes, but it's not like a tidal whoosh. But we've had rain. We had big wind yesterday. It's supposed to get really bad late tonight, tomorrow. And my Skype wasn't working right yesterday because of the electromagnetic effect and stuff so anyway there you go um, we're, we're suffering sandy here you know not not like new york city but uh still are you getting much news about uh oh i i that's a stupid question of course you're getting a heck of a lot of news about this the storm in, in fact is anybody getting any news about anything else <laughs> well i i don't watch tv anymore i i used to think people like that were weird but I really, really don't. I just don't find I, you know, I, 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 I do, of course, pick up news, and I, I do, you know, but I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm so disgusted so often of what they do and don't cover and what they repeat as news that I just don't. But I'm sure that most people, you know, that's that's what they're hearing about. I'm just noticing it's kind of a rainy, gray day. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're sipping your coconut uh, drinks down there, anyway. Well, yeah, uh, with a straw. Um, and, and then, of course, because people are so many types, um, you know, all very often the people who may say conspiracy research or that which falls under that umbrella in the broadest sense, once you get aware of certain conspiracies, literal plots, literal killings, literal events that were covered up, you also learn a lot of other stuff. You don't just learn about that. You learn other aspects of what scientific discoveries are out there, what's going on in other ways, you know. And um, some of these people are doing excellent work, but the way to, of course, tarnish them in, in the popular culture myth idea, propaganda, is to suggest that because some of them have serious personality quirks, that that means that they can't think. And of course, I mean, even other conspiracy researchers do this. I deal with some every day on my inbox who are excellent about certain things, but boy, oh boy, you mentioned that this other person had a point, and they will, you know, think that 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 person is your hero, just because you're saying intellectual honesty requires that we acknowledge this point, or that it was valid given where the research was at the time. They're not necessarily a disinfo agent. I think there are some. But but that in in general, those terms are thrown around in the so-called conspiracy research community a little too loosely because of people they don't like. You know? So it's a... a, Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm on side. I look at it this way. Uh, The thing that's really destroying humanity is competing against each other. I think the thing that will save it is collaborating with each other. You know, let, let's let's kind of uh, come together on what we agree on. Like, for example, Claire, are you at any point planning to show up at my door with a submachine gun and a black ski mask with, with, some, uh, with some sexy fisty cuffs and take me away to a FEMA camp? Do you ever plan on doing that? A red ski mask, maybe. No. Okay, we'll take that <laughs> as a no. <laughs> Cause but not... then there's mind control. Uh, uh, but and, but and my, point we... is, my point is... <laughs> That said, that said, there ain't anything really that we're going to fundamentally disagree on. So let's come together on the points that we do agree, 
And the points that we disagree, we can leave those for another time. Perhaps until such a time when we've averted a crisis where people in black ski masks and submachine guns will come to our door and exterminate us. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the, the come together reference is interesting, of course, because that's a Beatles thing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you sent me two Beatles songs this morning, so I had to, oh Lennon songs, John Lennon songs. Sorry, um, I, and and he, he seemed I, like a I've never heard those songs before, and it seemed very proto uh, truther in, in in a way, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I I don't recall sending you some songs this morning from Lennon, but um, I in fact I don't think I did. But my little signature on my email is "Give me some truth." That yeah. is one of his songs. That that is one of the Lennon canon. Um, and uh, he, um, I think that he actually would be one of us. I think that 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 he was a he was such a person. He was aware. Actually, the, if you want to call it original McCartney, or if we just leave it as McCartney, uh, was known uh, to have called Mark Lane of the JFK assassination um, early fame, right? Uh, sudden radar data of this weird long line. I mean, it's very strange. And this person was saying there's the chemtrails adding to the storm intensity um, and then um, uh, pockets of uh, EMF interference probably through a harp type event harp being um high altitude a rural research project which isn't research it's linked to the navy and it was in fact designed by its designer openly talking about the issue that he intended this to be partly for weather modification he thought it would be a good thing you could bring water to regions that didn't have it and you know maybe militarily rain on the opposite army or something like that right but but you, the the fact is, once you have these things in play, um, you have to be careful that your weather is natural because, you know, I mean, there's a there's a kind of a big lie out there. So I think it was a really good video. Do you have the title of it uh, for the listeners? It's called Harp Engineering Frankenstorm Hurricane Sandy Caught on Satellite and Radar. So. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just give you the uh, the name of the YouTube channel there as well. Uh, Rev Michelle Hopkins. Rev Michelle Hopkins is the name of the YouTube channel. Harp Engineering Frank and Storm should come up with it. Hurricane Sandy, caught on satellite and radar in full capitals. So yeah, R-E-V, it Reverend, I think. Uh, I think that's what, you know, so she's she, Rev, R-E-V, Michelle Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Either yeah. that or she's a rev evolutionary. Yeah, I think I think that's the case. It's not perfect, um, and and you know th- th- I don't expect perfection. I've gotten to the point where, you know, I came from a scholarly background and artistic, so I was used to excellence, but not always perfection. Um, and then I was, ex- you know, I was used to at least in scholarly works to see. Fairly careful writing, fairly careful source backup, that sort of thing. But you do also get hypothesizing and, and reasoning about what's found. And so I, you know, when I began to look into citizen researchers um, of all types, some of them scholarly, some of them not so scholarly in, in background, I was a little shocked at the quality of the writing and some of the quality of the, the backing up. But when they are right, they're right. And if you can kind of get over the idea that, well, anybody with something to say, it just has to be valid because they said it, or on the opposite end, if they didn't say it exactly right or they're not the very best proponent of the idea, still look into it because because they may at least have brought to your attention something that you needed to know or in some form. You know, they may not have, I always say some of these people are not their own best advocates. It doesn't mean the work is all bad or you know, and, and, and that's how I that's how I do my research. So I just, you know, want people to know I'm fairly careful, but I'm not dismissive uh, anymore on the surface. I, yeah, I used can't, to feel that was... Claire, I can relate to that. I can't tell you how many people um, I've talked to, right, absolutely adore their research and, and what they do, but just can't stand them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's personality. I wasn't even going for the personality issues but that's oh that's so so much a 